Recently, the Palm Springs Kiwanis Club had another great speaker. Let's listen in. I am an expert in ice cream, and that's just not by my own uh, understanding. It's by uh, the, uh, the world of ice cream lovers. You scream ice cream, we all scream for ice cream. So, here today, uh, we're going to talk about America's favorite dessert, as well as America's favorite flavor, which is? Vanilla. Vanilla is correct. And so when you add that to America's favorite pie, apple pie, you're in the mainstream of America. We love ice cream. Uh, several reasons for that, and we'll get into those. But first, let's talk about the ice cream industry history. Uh, it goes back to Nero. Yeah, 64 AD, when he was not fiddling around. Uh, he would send runners up to the mountains uh, and bring back snow. Uh, and what he added was honey, nectars, and that was the original snow cone, Italian ice, water ice, sorbet. Fruit, water, sugar, and frozen. So uh, that's uh, early on. Uh, next came, in, uh, we know Marco Polo. He was an uh, adventurer, traveled the world early on, and went to China and brought back a lot of flavoring materials that the world had not known before. Uh, so, thirdly, Catherine de' Medici. If you've been to Florence, Italy, uh, you know uh, Catherine de' Medici and the de' Medici uh, or Medici family in Florence, Italy. Uh, she married uh, in 1533 uh, the king of France, and she became the queen of France in 1533. She took this recipe of Italian ice and. Uh, King Henry's chef added the stuff that used to float to the top of the milk bottle called cream. cream. And that was the beginning of ice cream in Paris, France, 1533. It came to America in 1700. The governor, Governor Bladen of Maryland, had a dinner party and he served ice cream. It was written up that the governor served a pink cold concoction. <laughs> Wonder what flavor that was? Strawberry. Strawberry. I'm glad they changed the name. Or we'd be saying, oh, give me a uh, scoop of that pink cold concoction. So uh, that was changed. But the first uh, lady to serve ice cream in the White House, 1812, Dolly Madison. And uh, now, they didn't have the ice cream makers like we know it today, so what they did was had two pans. And the bottom had the ice, and the top had the cream and the flavoring. And uh, so there was no 7-Elevens in 1812, so uh, they went over to the Potomac River uh, because Dolly served it at the inaugural ball, and that's always in what season of time? Winter. In the winter time is correct. So they got plenty of ice, and uh, they served ice cream at the first inaugural ball. The first hand crank ice cream uh, maker came from a lady, Nancy Johnson. In 1847, she invented uh, the first one, had it patented, uh, sold it later to a housewares company in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, for a total sum in 1847, $200. That was a lot of money in 1847 uh, and because of her invention in uh, let me get this 1851 uh, Jacob Fussell in Baltimore Maryland started the first commercial ice cream manufacturing company uh, because of Nancy Johnson's invention and that is that rotation uh, scraping the, uh, the coal off of the barrel and freezing the ice cream. So that was the first commercial ice cream plant in America, 1851. We have not stopped eating ice cream since in America. 
Uh, now, Mr. Dennis has given you uh, some sweet treats here today, uh, and you have three choices. Uh, how many of you like the vanilla? Everybody? Yes, yes. Well, unbeknownst to you, uh, Dennis brought in a slow churned, no sugar added ice cream. Smooth, creamy, pretty tasty, wasn't it? Uh, one half the fat of regular ice cream. The next one, if you enjoyed French silk, uh, that one is a chocolate ice cream with a ribbon of vanilla mousse uh, and with large chocolate chips. This is a slow churn product, which means half the fat and 30% fewer calories. This is in uh, the slow churn line. This particular flavor I uh, developed uh, back in 1984, and uh, it's been one of the most popular. It's always in the top three across America. Slow churn uh, French silk, delightful product, great eating. Uh, and then last was the cookies and cream. This is the full leaded high test, uh, the real thing. And uh, uh, I had the pleasure of uh, putting together the first batch of cookies and cream in the world. Uh, we'll get to it in a few minutes as to the popularity. Now in tasting ice cream, I want to demonstrate, I use a gold plated spoon. The reason for that is that uh, silver uh, tarnishes. Plastic has a resin aftertaste. Gold does neither one of those, and so this is the best medium for tasting. We all have how many taste buds on the tongue? 9,000 taste buds on the tongue. And how long do they live for? <laughs> Scotch and scotch and brandy. No, uh, our taste buds live for a window of 12 days. Uh, they'll all die during that period. Thank goodness, not at the same day or time. Uh, and they come back rejuvenated continually until we get in our early 80s. Uh, they die out and they don't come back. So uh, enjoy your ice cream while you can. <laughs> So I use an 18 karat a gold spoon to taste with because I'm tasting way up here for the top note, the bouquet, the aroma. When we consume, we're consuming down in this middle area. And uh, so I have tasted and approved in my 30 year career at Dryer's Grand Ice Cream in Oakland, California, over 200 million gallons of ice cream. I've not swallowed that much. I know it looks like it with these cheeks. <laughs> But who would trust a skinny ice cream taster? Yeah. So I take a small amount right off the top, right when it's beginning to melt. And then I turn it upside down because that's the warmest, cover all 9,000 taste buds. Swirl, smack, and then spit. You don't have to swallow to taste. Now, for this occasion, I swallow today probably more than I should be, but stuff is good. And so, uh, so that's, that's my uh, process for tasting. Every morning we have some 60 packages waiting for me to taste as the uh, official taste tester for the company. And I have a big 55 gallon uh, trash barrel on wheels that follow me down the laboratory bench. Now we always have three uh, flavors from the previous day's run. Uh, we're running about 20 flavors a day. So uh, 20 times three, 60 packages. Always starting with the white wines of ice cream. Vanilla, French vanilla, vanilla bean. Work my way up to the heavy Bordeaux of ice cream, such as, what would you guess? Chocolate. No. One of the fastest growing uh, flavors today in America is mint, is correct, mint, a savory flavor, uh, and <laughs> you don't want to get it out of order, it always goes last, uh, because um, 
the washout, if I get them out of order, would be unsalted cracker and then lukewarm water, rinse off the buds, and generally I'm ready to go. I don't know when you had black walnut last, but it is the strongest flavor in America, in the world today, uh, that we produce and, and most people do. It's a small crop, black walnut. It's not like your English walnut, uh, which um, you would have groves and groves of uh, black, uh, excuse me, uh, English walnut trees. Uh, the black walnut is a wild crop, and uh, they do not uh, harvest it uh, every year, and it's, it's a very difficult crop. Uh, but a wonderful flavor. It makes a great flavor with cream and sugar. So, uh, I'm a fourth generation in the ice cream industry. Going back to 1880, my great-grandfather, New York City, Manhattan, made his own ice cream and candy. Uh, my son went to NYU, uh, unbeknownst to him at the time. Uh, he lived on the same street that his great-great-grandfather had an ice cream parlor, Christopher Street in Manhattan. Uh, my uh, grandfather started the first dairy co-op in the state of Tennessee. My father owned a dairy ingredient company in Atlanta, Georgia uh, with uh, cocoa, chocolate, fruits, flavors, coconut, uh, stabilizers, emulsifiers. And he and I were together for 15 years. I traveled North and South America as a formulator, problem solver, troubleshooter, and, uh, and then tra uh, traveled all of Canada, uh, the U.S., and some of Latin America. I had an uncle, Tom Harrison, in Memphis, Tennessee, at that time, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, it was one of the top five largest ice cream companies independent in America. Uh, he became a millionaire off of one idea. He was producing the Baby Ruth candy bar. And back in the 60s, anything on a stick would have been a flat mold, uh, like Eskimo pie, if you remember that. Uh, nothing round, in other words. It was all flat and, and wide. Whether it was banana or vanilla, chocolate, it was all that type of. And uh, his favorite candy bar was the Baby Ruth. He, on the way home, he'd stop by the grocery store and pick up a Baby Ruth candy bar. And what shape is Baby Ruth in? Round. And uh, so he ordered the first set of round molds in the world for ice cream. Uh, ordered it from FMC Corporation, which stands for Farm Machinery Company in San Jose, California. Now they make missiles and tanks and so forth. But, uh, and uh, anyway, uh, uh, prior to this, he was shipping in about 25 to 30 states, and when he started making the Baby Ruth in a round mold, uh, he couldn't make them fast enough, 24-7, and shipped them in uh, every state in America. So uh, next came, he invented the uh, Bomb Pop, if you remember that, red, white, and blue, uh, on a stick, and round, uh, like a missile. And so uh, I grew up in his ice cream factory in Memphis, I went to Memphis State University. My background is in colloidal chemistry. Uh, colloidal is water polymers, tree exudates. Uh, let's see, uh, like uh, guar gum, locust bean gum. Um, John the Baptist, uh, the Bible refers to his consuming those products. Uh, grown largely toward uh, and around the Mediterranean. And, uh, and then uh, you have other ones like uh, sodium carboxymethylcellulose, uh, products that come from trees, tree exudates. And the role of these stabilizers, ice cream, the best ice cream in America has 60% water. And when you freeze water, what do you get? Ice. We still get ice. And uh, so what these stabilizers do, these are five water molecules. And the stabilizers, very fine, they're only in the formula at about uh, six, uh, six, uh, 0.15 or 1%. 0.15, minimal, but it gets in between these water molecules, will not allow them to come back together again, because if they did, then you got a big ice crystal. And so the stabilizers, uh, emulsifiers, um, keep a smooth and creamy uh, texture uh, to ice cream. So uh, uh, that's uh, my background, a uh, fourth generation. 
uh, 15 years uh, with my father's company, 30 years with Dreyer's Grand Ice Cream as their taste tester, uh, flavor developer, and later to become, uh, for 25 years, their a corporate spokesperson. So uh, I developed, uh, while I was in the laboratory, 75 flavors that went to the marketplace. Uh, the most popular one that I developed, Dennis uh, introduced me by being the developer of cookies and cream. That has become, become the fastest growing new flavor in the history of ice cream. It's the number five best-selling flavor in the world. We know the top five flavors, vanilla is number one, but how much of the 100% does vanilla account for? What would you guess? Yeah, 30%. 30% of the total volume sold is vanilla. Why? It goes with everything. Pies, cakes, malt shakes, uh, and those of you that enjoyed the vanilla today, it was very delightful. I sampled it as well. Uh, number two, as you might guess, is chocolate. That's correct. And the most popular chocolate flavor in America, Bill Dreyer and Joe Eady. The last name may be new for you. Uh, from a ne Nebraska to New York, it's called Edie's Grand Ice Cream. And from Colorado West uh, to China, it's called Dryer's Grand Ice Cream. And uh, you know the Dryers here in the West Coast. But they were partners in 1929 on College Avenue, uh, excuse me, on Grand Avenue in Oakland, California. Thus the name Dryer's Grand uh, ice cream talked of its location, not its quality. Uh, back in the uh, teens and 20s, um, we did not have Rand McNally maps like we do today. And so many companies named uh, their company by geographical location. Uh, guess where Knob Hill Grocery Store is? San Francisco. San Francisco, Knob Hill. That's correct. Not too complex. And so uh, number two, uh, chocolate. Uh, represents only 10%. I knew you chocolate lovers thought it might be 75, but only 10. Uh, and the most popular chocolate flavored ice cream in America is Rocky Road. A great product, uh, milk chocolate ice cream with uh, toasted almonds and miniature marshmallows. Uh, there's a great history uh, on that particular flavor. Number three is what I call the triune flavor, the three in one. Neapolitan. Neapolitan. That is correct. And Neapolitan it refers to what? All three. All three? No. Napoli? Correct. Meaning that most of the early American ice cream makers in Boston, New York, Philadelphia, Baltimore were Italians. And they gave us not only Napoleon, Napoleon as you were saying, but uh, in Naples, Italy, where many of these Italians came from. So they gave it the name Neapolitan. It refers to the people that live in the city of Naples, Italy. They also gave us another good Italian flavor, and that is spumone. Spumone. <laughs> it, it can eat like tutti frutti, yes, uh, if you're not careful. They're well balanced. Uh, uh, a great flavor, though. And uh, so that's number three. And number four is a uh, product from Georgia, we'll call it, even though Arizona produces many of these nuts. Correct. Butter pecan. Butter pecan is number four. Uh, it kicked out strawberry about uh, 20 years ago out of the top five. At least Neapolitan uh, maintains a third of uh, strawberry. Neapolitan, by the way, the original was vanilla, chocolate, and something green. Wasn't meant. Pistachios. pistachios. Sure, the Italians grow the majority of the pistachios in the world. Uh, and did for many years, Turkey as well. Uh, now California has surpassed all of them 
uh, because of their quality. Uh, they don't put the red dye on it to cover up blemishes. So uh, uh, that was the original until the chocolate lovers rose up, kicked out pistachio, and it's vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry today, Neapolitan, and has been. Uh, and then number five, cookies and cream is correct. Uh, my wife and I, we love to travel and travel the world and uh, uh, cookies and cream is popular in Wales and Portugal and uh, Asia as well as Europe all over. Uh, again, uh, it's, a, it's a, one of those natural where you have uh, Oreos uh, broken up in vanilla ice cream. What's the story behind that? I was taking a break from the laboratory one day and I was in our ice cream parlor and I was doing some computation uh, flavor at the work, at the table. And I asked a young lady to bring me a scoop of my favorite, vanilla. And uh, she brought it on a, on a plate, uh, a stem glass, and a couple of cookies on it. And uh, I'm over here doing some computation work at the table, looked over here at the vanilla ice cream and the two cookies, came back, and on the second look, God said, save a step. <laughs> Put the cookies in the ice cream. I folded my paperwork. Walked down two blocks to a then Lucky's grocery store in California and uh, purchased a package of Oreos, Hydrox, Lorna Dunes, another half a dozen, tried them in uh, vanilla ice cream and uh, named it Cookies in Cream. It uh, has the till, the N and the till uh, in the middle, Cookies in Cream. Most of the cookies and cream today in America is cookies and cream. And marketing came to me and said, John, what do you have in the filing cabinet that's been approved but not to market? And so uh, there were a half a dozen. They said, well, let's try that cookies and cream for 90 days and let's see what happens. <laughs> and now you know the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say. Uh, uh, now, if any of you are thinking that uh, you would like to go back and uh, to education and, and, and college, and um, you can get a dairy science or food science degree that would lead you into be an ice cream taste. It's never too late, uh, especially for ice cream. And so uh, here in California, uh, let's see, Cal Davis offers either one of those degrees, food science or dairy science, uh, Penn State and many universities across America uh, would, would do that. So, uh, in tasting ice cream, uh, as I said earlier, over 200 million gallons that I have approved, and uh, we have some four plants across America. The largest plant in the world making ice cream is right up the road in Bakersfield, California. Now, the second is in Laurel, Maryland. The third largest plant in the world is our plant in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And lastly, our fourth plant is in Salt Lake City, Utah. If you make ice cream and sell it in the mountain states, you have to make your product in the mountain states uh, because of the altitude. The air cells in the ice cream will either expand and the package lid will come off or it, it will shrink if you try to ship it here to uh, California as an example and when it does that then it loses about an uh, inch and a half uh, so uh, we sell ice cream company by its of course uh, volume half gallon quart pint and so forth so uh, number six I know you're concerned about your favorite flavor so let me share that it's number six, mint. Mint chocolate chip. Great combination. We used a uh, cream to mint in a 12% butter fat uh, with pure semi-sweet chocolate chips. Wonderful flavor. I never liked it in the lab because it was always last. But I accidentally took a package home and uh, had some after dinner and man is that a it's a great flavor. If you haven't tried uh, mint chocolate chip, excellent. Number seven, coffee, mocha. Number eight, chocolate chip. Nine, marble fudge. Ten, finally, strawberry. It's dropped, hasn't it? Yeah. 
So, um, the company insured my taste buds for one million dollars. Uh, as I shared earlier, we all have 9,000 taste buds, so if you divide that into a million, you get about $150 per bud. <laughs> and uh, I exercise them an awful lot, uh, yeah. So, uh, in closing, uh, we're going to have an opportunity for Q&A as well, but um, I shifted from uh, flavor development uh, to corporate spokesperson, and for the next 25 years, I did 10,000 radio interviews, 7,000 TV interviews across America, over 300 magazine and newspaper interviews, all talking about ice cream. Uh, there's about four or five books around the world. I know there's one in France, uh, one in uh, Norway, one in China, one in Japan. Uh, all of those books, many of them uh, young adults, children books, but each one has a paragraph uh, and my photo on how to taste ice cream and uh, some of the language of ice cream as well. So, uh, in, in my closing at this point, uh, I want you to know that you, you all got a full scoop today. Uh, uh, but if you'd like to get more, uh, you can Google John Harrison ice cream, and I promise you'll get the last lick. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> So listen, yes sir. You said you got it off the top. Isn't that subconsciously why people stir their ice cream because it's, it gets warmer? It doesn't freeze your taste buds when you tell me that once you can actually taste it, it like soft butter, which is warmer, seems to have more taste, or am I wrong? Uh, that's correct. Uh, many people uh, at home will get their uh, packaged ice cream out, put it in a bowl, and put it in a microwave for hopefully no more than 10 seconds. Uh, if it goes much more than that, you'll be drinking it. But, uh, but that warms it up. And, uh, and a lot of people, even in a bowl, perhaps even here today, and you'll do this with it. And what you're doing is incorporating the room air temperature, warming it up, and getting maximum flavor. Now, you want to be careful. You want to have a good ice cream uh, if you're going to do that. Uh, but uh, otherwise, you may get some bad flavor. So. Did you yes. tell me that cookies and cream became so popular when Ben and Jerry started marketing and they had to ask you to make it? <laughs> no, uh, but we, Dryer's Ice Cream, uh, did manufacture for five years some 90% of Ben and Jerry's ice cream in our plant in Indiana. Now they did send us their cream in a, uh, you know, a tractor trailer. Uh, and we use their cream, but we manufactured and then called on uh, all of the uh, grocery chains. Uh, and so we were, we were part of their success story. Uh, but believe me, they've got some great flavors. They, um, like Baskin Robbins, they pour in a lot of ingredients into their, like we were talking earlier today about Cherry Garcia. An excellent product of vanilla ice cream with a lot of cherries and chunks of chocolate. It's a great product or the New York Super Fudge Chunk or, or, or. Uh, the point is uh, Ben & Jerry's uh, has a good product. Currently uh, it is owned by Unilever in England. Yeah. Ben yeah. & Yes. Yes, question. Uh, apparently the industry when four or five years ago decided that the half gallon container at full price was more than the people in general would want to pay so you reduce the size and so you keep the price down is that what why the thank you doctor for, for a good question the question was uh, the cart the container size uh, that it is seemingly uh, been reduced in size, but the price is still the same. And uh, the answer is yes. Uh, not only uh, Dryer's Ice Cream, but uh, all companies uh, have done that, not only with ice cream, but candy bars and a lot of uh, different foodstuffs. Uh, and, and the answer is uh, not to compromise. 
uh, with the raw ingredients going up, uh, do we get that price point uh, beyond where the consumer uh, would pay for it? And, or do we reduce the size, keep the price there? And so uh, our company, along with many others, have chosen to do the latter. Thank you. Good question. I want to ask another. This, this has to do with another company. In the Midwest, about 10, 15 years ago, a new company called Bell Bird or Bell Deer or Bell something went belly up because they had a, a problem. And some rich guy like you says, here, I'll take my money, rebuild your, your company. What happened in that whole story? Good question. Uh, the name of the company was Blue Bell in Brenham, Texas. Yeah, Texas. And uh, they had a listeria problem. And uh, many, uh, not many, but uh, maybe a half a dozen people died uh, from this. Uh, it's very dangerous. You have to take a lot of precautions as a manufacturer and have good manufacturing practices. And something happened and uh, product got out, people got sick and died. So uh, and this was in a big area because they were one of the largest regional ice cream companies in America. Uh, <clears throat> but yes, there was a gentleman from Fort Worth, Texas that did invest a lot of money in, into the company and uh, they are s still in operation today. They were down for probably a total of uh, 10 months and uh, until they got their house in order. And, but they're back in the marketplace and uh, doing well. It's a, it's a good product, a good ice cream. And it was sad that that happened, but uh, it does happen. And how come they are in California? Uh, <clears throat> the question is, why is not Blue Bell ice cream in California? Uh, they are struggling just to get back uh, into the marketplace. Uh, I believe that in the future, uh, we'll see Blue Bell ice cream in California. Yes, sir. So is ice cream sort of like wine to be classified as like cookies and cream? Do you call it cookies and cream? Do you have to have a certain type of you know, recipe for that or what? Or the call itself cookies and cream? Uh, good question again. Uh, yes, uh, uh, to be able to call um, ice cream, sherbet, sorbet, uh, all your frozen dairy desserts, they are called regulations. Food and drug has regulations. That's one of the, the key why we enjoy living in America. <clears throat> there are standards of identity. Now, uh, they sometimes can put some undue pressure on manufacturing, but it's still to the consumer's benefit. Uh, such as the nutritional information on the side of a carton. Uh, that, in 1980, the manufacturers did not have to tell you and I consumers what was in the package, much less, much less what, nutritional. That did not come until 1881 that we had to tell you what was in it uh, in order of preponderance, milk, cream, sugar, and so forth. And then as we <clears throat> made some claims such as uh, uh, half the fat or 30% uh, less calories, then we had to put the nutritional. Today, all manufacturers have to put nutritional labeling on every one of their packages to give the consumer uh, choices uh, as they read it and uh, understand. Uh, so that's been a very, very positive thing for the food industry. However, a lot of mom and pop ice cream manufacturers have gone out of business because it's very expensive to have an independent laboratory give you a nutritional uh, printout on all your flavors and today <clears throat> we're probably making uh, 300 different flavors on the different styles of frozen dairy desserts and uh, back when I started uh, joined dryers in 1982 we only made 16 flavors uh, and now hundreds of flavors. So it's a, uh, expensive uh, to, to, to do that nutritional. Thank you, John. Great. All right, thank you, everybody. Thank you, President Heather. For more, go to KiwanisPalmSprings.org.